Hi everyone, welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. In this video, we're going to be creating our stack. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and create a new Java project. I'm going to call it stack. And in it, I'm going to create the classes. So, I'm going to create a node class, just like we have in the queue. I'm going to create a stack class. And finally, I'm going to also create the controller class. As we know, they're going to be really similar to the queue because essentially they're going to have the same structure as the queue, but instead of being last in, first out, it is first in, first out. So let's store the same information in the node. I'm going to just copy it as it is. So we have the same exact node. The queue is going to be the exact same, but of course the pop method is going to be a bit different. So let's work on that first. So we have our head, which is the beginning of the stack. Then we get and set the head. We can push new elements at the beginning. We can find elements in the stack. And we can pop elements from the beginning. I'm going to remove this. So how do we pop elements from the beginning? We simply make the head point to the second element instead of the first one. So let's remove all of this and think about it. So we have to make the head point to the second element or no. So in order to be able to make the head point to the second element or null, there has to be a head. So, if head is not null, then head equals head dot get next. Now, get next can either be the second element of the of the stack, or null if the head is the only element. So this is how you pop things from a stack. It's fairly simple. Okay, so that is that. I'm going to add one small thing. Instead of making it a void, I'm going to make it a node. And I'm going to return the node that we delete so that we can do something with it. For example, say we've deleted this node. So how do we do this? We create a node that we're going to return later, and I'm calling it to return. You can call it whatever you want. And we make it equal to the head. Then we make the head equal to its child. And finally, we return to return, which is the node that was the head originally. If the head was null, then the head is still null. We don't return anything. We just return null. So this is how the stack works. Now to the controller. The controller in our stack is going to be really similar to that of the queue as well. So let's just copy it over and then see what we can change. I'm just doing this to save you time so you don't have to be going through all of this with me. So instead of a queue, it's obviously going to be a stack this time. Okay, so we have the menu we're going to add, remove, find, or quit from it. We have the scanner, and we get the input here, then we return that. In the run menu, we get the input from the method that we was written above. And then, if the input doesn't equal Q, which is for quitting, we're going to add, remove, or find nodes, depending on whether the input is A, R, or F. If not, we're going to print out unknown command. And finally, we're going to repeat this loop with a new set of input. Up to there, I think it's fairly okay here is quite all right as well, where um, we ask the user for customer details, then we create a new node with them, and then we give this node to the stacks push method. So we're essentially doing the exact same as before. Forward person is going to pop, but not only that, it is actually going to print the details out 
of the customer we pop. So what happens here is we pop the customer. Remember how in our stack, the pop returns the node that was popped. So we print the details out of what we're popping. The only error here is that pop could potentially return null. So instead of doing it this way, we're going to have to check if pop is null, if the, the, the node we are popping is null or not. So what we do is we cut it, and then we do node uh, popped equals that. If it is not null, we print the details out, and that's it. And also this, I want to put it down here as well. Okay, so we pop and we put that into a variable called popped. If popped is not null, it means that we removed an element and we returned it. So then we print out that this customer moves forward and we print the details out. If not, we print out that no node was removed, probably because there wasn't any left. Finally, the find method is the same as for the queue. We simply scan, we get the customer name, and we find it in the stack. Print details is the same as before. So let's play and see what happens this time around. So we have um, the three uh, customers now added, me, Hillary and Salva. Salva was added last, so in a queue, he should be the last one to leave. However, in here, what is going to happen is that he's going to be the first one to leave. So let's remove him and see what we get out. Indeed, this customer moves forward. There we have it. Okay, so let's stop that and see what else we can do. Is there any errors in this program? Let's see if we play again and try to remove something. No node removed. Okay, excellent. So at least we know that. In our previous program, we didn't get any output. Find. No, not found because we've restarted the program and we don't have anything in it. Q just quits. Okay, so it seems like everything is potentially working in here, which is brilliant. Now, this has been a really quick session on the stack because it is really similar to the queue. Next up, we're going to be dealing with sets, which uh, is a really interesting part of Java and definitely really useful as well. But we're not going to be creating our own sets. We'll see in the presentation how that is going to work. So stick with me and let's see you in the next one.